Hi there, and welcome to The 60th Presents. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the personal items that a, uh, a soldier of the light infantry during the French and Indian Wars might have carried, and in particular what I carry uh, in my haversack and in my blanket roll. Please remember that this is really my interpretation of what a soldier might have carried. Uh, it's what I choose to carry based on experience and what I've found useful. Uh, and everything I have with me, I have at some point uh, used uh, when out in the woods. So hopefully it'll provide you with a fairly realistic idea of what a soldier might have carried. I think the best thing to do would be for me to start by unrolling my uh, bedroll and showing you what's inside. So. Uh, this bedroll is, is uh, a simple uh, blanket uh, carried on a tump line. Uh, the tump line, as you'll see in a second, consists of uh, a simple leather strap and a length of rope. Now, tump lines were uh, used by Native Americans um, as a way to carry their, their uh, clothing, their personal items when traveling. Uh, they might use it to carry blankets, but also um, they used it to pull sleds in winter uh, or to even to carry children who were carried on uh, by the women using a board uh, they were strapped to a board and then carried down their back on a tump line now that's my tump line that could also be woven from various different fibers mine simply modified from an old uh, an old belt uh, in fact i think this is an old uh, french belt that's been chopped down uh, folded over with a rope tied to the end my blanket roll is secured by two straps. Which hold it together. And again, these are just two simple leather straps. If I then turn it so you can perhaps see it a little bit better, if I roll it out. You can see how uh, my blanket folds around uh, the items that I carry. In particular, in my blanket, I carry with me a spare pair of moccasins. Now, as a light infantryman, I might expect to be uh, out on patrol for quite a long period of time, and so carrying a pair of moccasins is very sensible. It's uh, their alternative form of footwear, they're light, they don't play anything really. Um, they're also very comfortable and very practical in the woods. If my shoes wear out, I can simply put these on, and if they break, if these break, then all I need is another couple of pieces of leather simply to replace the worn soles. In addition to my moccasins, I have with me uh, a small bag, and in this bag I have uh, some spare fire making kit. So I have I think, some cloth and char cloth in there, and some dry, dry pieces of tinder, uh, or kindling rather, from the last time I had a fire. Also in here, I have a small bag that contains some items to help me wash. I have uh, a comb. Um, this is just a horn comb. I also have uh, a bar of soap. That's pretty much all I uh, all I need. I have a also have a toothbrush, which is um, a wooden toothbrush with uh, just hair bristles. And I have my housewife or hussif. And a housewife or a hussif is uh, basically a soldier's sewing kit. As you can see, it's got a, a pad for holding needles and it has some pins and so on. Some lengths of different cords. I've got some linen, I've got some pieces of fabric, a couple of spare buttons, and some sinew uh, in there. I also have, let's put myself a bit more comfortable. I also have in here, um, tucked into one of my moccasins. I have my tobacco pouch, which contains my pipe. Now, I don't smoke a huge amount, um, I would advise that you don't either, but uh, if you're sitting by a campfire on a long winter's night, having a, a pipe and a pouch of tobacco uh, can be a nice way of uh, whiling away the time and can be a huge morale boost. So, that is my pipe and my tobacco. I also have in here a spare shirt. This shirt is a slightly heavier weight shirt than the linen one I'm wearing now. This is made from some uh, cotton flannel material. Um, 
just provides you with a little bit more warmth. Um, I tend to wear this overnight in winter, uh, or wear it overnight even in summer, and in winter I'll wear it during the day. It just provides you with a little bit more warmth, warmth a little bit more comfort. Next thing to do is to look at my haversack. Now, soldiers were issued haversacks, they were usually made of linen, uh, but when equipment wore out, it needed replacing. And so I've replaced my linen haversack. This is uh, perhaps a more um, a style of haversack you might be more likely to see uh, used by a civilian, particularly someone who spends time in the woods. It's made from a slightly he from a heavyweight uh, canvas material, and it's uh, been been painted to offer it a little bit more uh, to create a little bit of waterproofness uh, and to, uh, to offer some protection to the equipment inside. Also has a leather strap. Um, this leather strap is much more comfortable than a linen strap because it tends not to kind of roll up and fold and sits more comfortably across the shoulder. Opening up my haversack, I have uh, some eating equipment. So I, I have um, a simple wooden bowl, which uh, I use to eat from. Um, and in that bowl, I must confess, this is something of a, a reenactorism, but I do carry with me uh, a couple of small little um, jars that contain uh, some herbs and so on. So I have some sage, I have some pepper, I have some salt. Um, if I'm honest with you, I don't think that many soldiers uh, on patrol would carry these, but they do help to make food a little bit more um, palatable in the evening, so that's why I choose to keep them with me. Having said that, one thing I found recently talking about uh, soldiers of the 60th foot uh, in a much later war, serving in the, the uh, the um, Peninsula War against Napoleon refers to uh, German soldiers serving within the regiment uh, who, wherever they were, seemed to uh, find herbs and um, spices and so on that they could use to flavour their food. And it talks about how whilst uh, the British soldiers, the English soldiers, the Irish soldiers and so on were sitting around their campfire eating very simple meals that didn't have much taste to them, for some reason the German soldiers with, uh, of the 60th were able to find these herbs and were able to, have, to eat quite well. And so, whilst I very much doubt that light infantrymen carried with them small glass jars of herbs, perhaps this is a way of reflecting their ability to survive in the woods and to, to liven up their food uh, under quite, different, quite challenging circumstances. However, I do accept that that is something of a reenactorism and there's a bit of a, uh, uh, a thing that I do to make my life a little bit more comfortable. Also in there I have a bag, and this bag contains uh, some food. This food is, uh, probably can't see it very well from there. Um, this food, this is parched corn, and all this is is uh, sweet corn or maize um, that has been uh, dried out on a, a, a hot uh, skillet or pan um, to remove the moisture. Now, this has been in here for a while, it's uh, still quite edible. Um, it doesn't taste a huge amount, you can add some salt to it to give it some taste. This was very uh, commonly carried by natives and also by rangers um, as a trail food. So something you can carry with you that doesn't weigh very much uh, but offers some calories. It also, if you eat parched corn and then you, you drink water, it tends to swell up slightly and make you feel quite full. So that's my parched corn and that lives in its bag in my bowl. I also have uh, a fork, a two-pronged fork in the style of the 18th century, and um, just to protect the, the points I have a small piece of leather that I tend to wrap around it. This is just to make eating a little bit easier, you can also use it to hold food on the fire. Um, so that's my, my fork, and it's my main uh, eating piece of eating equipment. I have a spare piece of uh, linen fabric that I can use, I can use this for a variety of things, wrapping food, I can use it for uh, repairing clothing and so on, so it's always handy to have spare bits of fabric. <coughs> 